Hey, welcome back to another video. My name is Jesse and I help entrepreneurs apply spiritual practices to their business to help grow and expand and scale. So I have done about five plant ceremony uh, ceremonies in my life and um, first one I did I did three in 2015 and then I did another two in June of 2018 and um, what I want to talk to you about is that is that actually uh, the, the fifth ceremony that I had well the fourth and fifth ceremony because they're very similar um, and what what I want you to know is that I, I learned something that is absolutely incredibly profound that's going to um, change the way you think about personal development and the reason I'm recording this video today is because I just barely realized what the message I received was. It's, it's January, it's February 2nd of 2019, so it took me over six months to figure out exactly what it was that I learned on that night and how to apply it to my life. And that's what I'm going to, and I, I learned that today by doing a, a, a meditation from Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, and I was so profoundly touched and, and had such a profound revelation about what it is I learned exactly that I absolutely I literally had to change my life and I'm I'm going to be doing these types of videos from now on. I mean it, it's just <laughs> just the way it's going to be. So so I'll explain to you what the ceremony looked like for me. Um, so bear with me because I'm going to be remembering as I go, but also um, tying in some new concepts that I just learned today. So um, I'll start off by just saying that. Um, you know, everything that we did uh, in this plant ceremony was 100% legal um, because we are under the um, supervision of a of a of a Native American church member. And um, and if you have questions about the legality of, of ayahuasca, you can um, research uh, the um, the different religions like Santo Daime and the Native American Church um, about how their legal status and how they use ayahuasca as a um, as a legal as a um, sacred sacrament so I won't get into that but what, what I will say is that um, we did two ceremonies uh, in June and um, the first night we, we, we did a we did a ceremony with a, a a shaman that was trained in the Shapibo tradition and that's considered to be the the best tradition, although I don't like to say best or worst because there's a lot of different ways to do it, but they are very well respected and renowned as being um, sort of the founders of, of this ayahuasca, this type of ayahuasca ceremony. And, and they had cheated very traditionally. We had um, um, all the sacred oils and all of the uh, tobacco um, and all of the, she was doing all of the uh, um, the music and stuff, the traditional music, and so um, it was a beautiful ceremony. She's actually a very, very uh, incredible shaman. And so, um, night one was actually very, uh, very, very interesting for me because I didn't really get a lot of messages that night. Um, in fact, the only message that I, what I, what I realized is I hadn't set the proper intention, and I kind of got a lot, a lot of random images. Um, and so, uh, the only thing that I really could take away from night one was. I kept seeing this, uh, this, this, these lights, these very, very bright lights, almost like it was like headlights. And it, I got the sense that this thing was a piece of technology or a piece of uh, something that I could interact with that, um, that was going to share with me something that was going to be important. Um, and that was about all I could really uh, understand. And then uh, the, the, the messages I got for the rest of that night were basically, um, it was very interesting because I, I was essentially staring at a computer screen the entire night. It was almost as if I was looking over the shoulder of somebody who was using the computer. And I, could, I just kept seeing a bunch of, um, you know, windows and cursors and mouse clicks and things like that that, you know, essentially was just me as if, as if somebody was really struggling with something, like really trying to figure out this computer and they just couldn't figure it out and they didn't know why it wasn't working. And finally, at the end of the night, they just threw up their hands and they just said, I don't know, I can't get it to work. It's not mobile optimized. That was literally the message that I got. It meant nothing to me, um, and um, I think you know. I think I'll, I'll understand what it means later on, kind of like how I understood what the second night meant to me today. Um, and maybe it was just trying to tell me that I've spent too much time in front of a computer and that I need to get out more. I mean, maybe that's just the message that I needed at the time. But the message that I received the second night was one of the most profound things I've ever experienced, and it's taken me this long to even digest and understand what happened. Um, so I'm going to start off just by explaining the vision that I had, and I'm going to tell you why, what I think that means, and I'm also going to tie in, like I said, this, 
this meditation method from Dr. Joe Dispenza that made me realize what exactly it was that I learned how to do that night. And so um, what I did that, my intention was to connect to source and, and be guided by uh, beings of light that knew better than me. That was a, some guidance that I got from, from one of the, the helpers there. So I said, I, I want to connect to source. I want to talk to beings that have my, their best, my best interest in mind and I want to um, connect with them directly. I had no other intentions than that. I just want to connect to source. And so that's what happened that night. Um, I started out um, and I, I saw that machine again that I had mentioned, the headlights. And I was able to, to f grasp onto this thing and manipulate it almost like I was holding like an iPad. And what, it, what I ended up realizing was that this thing was allowing me to, almost like one of those jets that you hold on to and you go underwater like snorkeling or something, it, it was propelling me through uh, black space. It was a completely dark, um, cavernous uh, vacuum of a, of a room and an experience. And there was nothing around me, just blackness. And, but then I started seeing these lights, um, almost like uh, Mario coins or something. They're just kind of lined up all in one, and we were passing through them, and this thing was pulling me through them. And I was absorbing these lights into my being or my soul. Um, and what I realized very soon was that these lights actually represented all the people in my life. Um, my dad, my uncle, my mom, my brother, my wife, my, all my best friends, all of the people who I've ever interacted with in my entire life, even the people that I barely remember, even the small interactions, the people I used to work with, the co-workers, the acquaintances, literally everything, I got the sense that it was literally everybody I've ever come in contact with in my entire life. Um, whether how big or small, it didn't matter. And I went through that for a long time. You can imagine how many people that is. And I absorbed every single one of them into my being. And uh, uh, what happened immediately after that was um, they were suddenly um, arranged in a, in a cube, a three-dimensional cube. And all the lights that represented the people in my life were uh, distributed homogeneously and evenly throughout the entire cube in 3D space. And so I could, um, I understood that, you know, this cube was kind of like my universe and my uh, realm of, of consciousness essentially and it was uh, describing how everyone I've ever interacted with is is part of me and part of my my understanding of the world and part of me as an individual and part of a lot of different things and I understood all that um, and then at that exact moment um, you know essentially a sword or a some sort of rod came shooting through the center of it and then shot through the earth and um, there's a cube attached to the earth through this spear, through this like sword. Um, and that was it. And funny enough, that was, my, that was my spaceship that I mentioned, right? So I knew that I could travel. If, I, if I, I could just hold on to this and I could hold on to this thing, it was only this big. But it was the entire earth and my cube of life and the sword pushed through it. And I, if I just hang on to this, I, can, I could travel through anywhere in the universe. Um, and that's, that's the understanding that I received. Um, so I don't know how to even interpret that. I, I, don't, I don't expect to be building a spaceship or going to different parts of the universe, although maybe I can now. But um, the most interesting thing is what happened after that. And what happened after that was this, um, this entity that was the, head, the headlights, I'll call them. Um, it shared with me something that uh, it showed me a piece of technology. And one thing I forgot to mention about the first night was that um, when I saw that the headlights um, the first time, it flashed it, it, it flashed something out at, in the room, and it and it, it looked like this, like it looked like a just a cylinder like this. It was about this this size, and the cylinder was glo was it lo looked glowing like a disco ball, and the disco ball was shooting light out. Um, and there's little pins of light, and I could literally see all the pins of light across the room. It was as if, literally as if this thing was a disco ball, and it was illuminating the entire room. And then it went away. So it almost like it showed me this thing, and then it said, nope, never mind. Well, the second night, it, 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 made, it let me actually interact with it. Um, and so I was, I was given the ability to hold this thing. And, um, you know, obviously this is just a this is just a speaker, USB or a Bluetooth speaker. But in in my in my vision, what I could do was I could there were there were sections on this device that were about six um, six or seven little sections, and the sections could be rotated. I knew that the colors were um, they meant something, but I didn't know what they meant, and I knew that I could 
manipulate the different colors and kind of turn them and notch them up and down and it would it would do something to this device but I didn't know exactly what at the time um, and I knew that if I let's say dialed all these other ones down to zero and the other one that was left that was the blue light well then this thing would shine and I turn this one all the way up to 100 well then the blue light would would dominate and every and and when I would do that <clears throat> you know I I also understood that everybody in my in that sphere or in that in that uh, cube that I described with all the different people in my life, all of those um, all of the different nodes that represented the per the people in my life, the spirits of them, they would all turn blue, which which told me that if I'm emitting if this if I if I dial this thing up to only emit blue light, then everyone in my life is also going to emit blue light and only blue light, or at least receive that from me. And I also understood that. Um, uh, you know, I would, let's say, notch two of them up and the light would change and whatever the mixture of those colors are. And, and the same thing was true for all the different mixtures of colors that I could have. And the ideal, I understood, was that all of them should be up to 100. And what would happen? What happens when you mix all these different spectrums of light together? You get completely white light. And that was the ultimate goal that this thing is trying to tell me is, is the key to personal success. I knew that this thing, the way this thing interacted with me would be the, the key to ultimate success. And um, so what it told me is that every single one of these colors needs to be up to 100. And, and if that would happen, um, then what I can do is I can move freely inside this cube and people will make room for me. And the idea was to go from the bottom left of the cube to the top right of the cube. And the top right is, your, is your, the best version of yourself and the bottom left is the lowest version of yourself. And um, I got the message that as you move to the, from the bottom left to the top right, um, people would make room for you. And the message there is, you know, there's no reason for you to not reach for the best version of yourself. And you, some people might be scared about how that will affect the relationship in their life. And the message I received was that doesn't matter. Is that those people that the, the energy will make room for you, and you can you can be the best version of yourself without being um, worried about how it'll affect other people. Um, so that's not a problem for me, but it might be a problem for other people, which is maybe why I received the message. Um, okay, so. That was basically the message that I received. Now, what I didn't, what I didn't understand at the time was I didn't know what these colors meant and how to use them, and and I was left with actually a lot of questions like, what are, what are the colors and how do I use them? How do I manipulate them? How do I turn them up to a hundred? And that was what I realized today after doing the meditation of Joe Dispenza is that, um, you know, his fundamental teaching is that you want to connect with your heart center and, and reach heart coherence. And, um, you know, you imagine a, a, a light in the center of your chest. And then you, what you want to do is bring up a positive emotion into that area. And then that will create coherence in your heart. And that will be resonated outwards um, to the people around you and to, into your life, into your reality. And um, so... You know, I, I'm going to do another video about exactly what I think that means because that might be hard for people to understand. But what what it means in this case <clears throat> is that um, you want to you want to find all of those. You, although there's kind of like you know a certain number of core positive emotions that you can call up and then um, amplify with your heart energy and then expand it outwards. And so what came to me today as I was doing the meditation was that. Um, each one of the different colors in the piece of technology that I showed you represented a, a, a positive emotion. And I got the message that emotions are the language of the universe. And so if you're constantly putting a negative energy into your heart, um, into your heart energy and expanding that outwards, um, then you're putting off negative energy to people around you. But if you inject a positive emotion into that heart center and you and you expand it outwards, then you're, you're sharing a positive emotion with everyone else. And that's how you get, for instance, that blue light I mentioned to be touching other people in your life. Um, and so this challenge now is, is, is that I understand that each one of those colors represents a positive emotion. And maybe it doesn't matter which color represents which emotion, but what I do know is that there's an emotion that corresponds to, let's say, blue, and there's, an emo there's a positive emotion that, that, that corresponds to red, and all the other colors that are in this technology, all six colors. Um, and so 
the key is to experiment and understand which one, um, which, which one of these positive emotions. For instance, there could be joy and gratitude and abundance and acceptance and compassion and empathy. There are all kinds of positive emotions and um, I'm still exploring which ones are related to the six colors. But what I get the sense of is that um, you can pick whichever ones work for you, right? So if you want to have, you, you, can, you can almost like inject whichever positive emotion you can you can correlate whichever emotion you want to whichever color it doesn't matter it's your choice but you need to pick six of them and you need to practice um, expanding the energy out through your heart center the positive energy out through your heart center and that's how you're going to develop personally and that's how you're going to share your abundance and your positivity with the people in your life and that's how you're going to move from the bottom left to the top right um, and so literally this is something that I discovered tonight and it was a message that I received from my second plant ceremony and this is the um, this is what I'm going to be exploring on this channel and I want to apply it to my business my goal my my journey as an entrepreneur how do I turn Joe Dispenza's method and this it, revelation I received from my second ayahuasca session in June of 2018 how do I relate that to my success as an entrepreneur and how do I actually share that with people and help them grow and um, I'm going to be uh, doing as many videos as I can on this topic because I've become fascinated with it literally within the next last like you know couple hours that I come up. This is day one um, of of the channel. So if you understand what I'm talking about, if you have you've received similar messages, or if you connect with what I'm saying in the, in terms of, of expanding out your positive emotions, then comment and and let me know what it is that you you connected with and share this with somebody who needs this message and or who somebody who's stuck as an entrepreneur and needs a spiritual awakening to help them with their business because that's what i believe um, then share this and please subscribe as well because um, i'm going to be doing as many videos as i possibly can about this topic um, and i appreciate all your support so that's the end of the video thank you so much